Let's make sure you are super comfortable with your organic naming. We're going to start from the basics and build our way up. Now, the very first thing before we name these lovely compounds that I prepared earlier is to make sure that we know our numbering for the number of carbons that we've got as part of our main carbon chain. And those are, of course, if we've got one carbon, that is meth, two carbons is eth, three prop, four, oh my gosh, do I know? Four but, and then five and six. That's where we get to um, prefixes that we're used to. So five, of course, is pent, like pentagon, and then six hex, like hexagon. Once we've got that, whenever you are naming your organic compounds, I would strongly, strongly recommend do not try and build the whole name in your head from scratch immediately. Go piece by piece, start with the longest carbon chain, figure out what else is going on on there, and then do your numbering last. So we'll start with the simplest up here. We have got a three carbon chain, just carbon, carbon, single bonds, and just hydrogens around it. So no fancy functional group, which means this is, of course, an alkane. So for a three carbon alkane, that will be prop ane. But you knew that one already. Now for our second one, this is when we actually have to start thinking about some of our naming rules. Once again, we've got a three carbon chain, only carbon, carbon, single bonds. So it is just going to be prop but we also have a couple of bits hanging off. We have got this iodine here, which would give us a prefix iodo. And we have a methyl group here, one carbon chain, so meth and then ion. Putting these together to give us our final name, we have to remember that prefixes need to go in alphabetical order. So we can't say methyl iodo, we have to say iodo methyl. Now, you'll notice that I've left gaps and that's because we need to position these groups. We have to say which carbon they are on. And employing another one of our naming rules, we want to use the smallest possible numbers. Because when we're numbering these compounds, we can actually count from left to right, making this carbon one, this carbon two, and this carbon three. Or we could count from right to left, making this carbon one, this carbon two, and this carbon three. Now, the one that we choose is the one that gives us the smallest possible numbers. So we could have um, three iodo, two methyl, or we could have one iodo, two methyl. Of course, the smaller one is one iodo, two methyl propane with dashes or hyphens between any numbers and any letters. Let's go to our third naming. I've gone skeletal um, and you can't stop me. OK, make sure that you get used to skeletal formula. It's going to become your best friend if you are in year 12 and you're not quite comfortable with it yet. That's fine. If you're in year 13, it's time to get comfortable. OK, because especially when you start to see longer and more complex compounds, you'll see skeletal formula more and more and more. So each vertex on our compound, unless there's another atom or a heteroatom, is a carbon, which means that this is a one, two, three, four carbon chain. I should go back to red. OK, this does not count as part of our carbon chain because it's an oxygen, right? There's an O there. So this being a four carbon chain, of course, is a but. So we have this OH group. We have this OH group. And so this would be given the ending ol because this is our um, alcohol functional group. So only carbon carbon single bonds and an ol at the end. So this is going to be butan ol. We also once again have a one carbon branch just over here, which would make this a methyl. And so this is methyl, wrong pen. This is methyl butanol. Again, you see the gaps. Let's make sure that we get our numbering correct. And this is where you really have to pay attention because whichever group gets the end of the name, 
that is going to be your highest priority. And the highest priority gets the lowest number. So that would make this carbon over here, carbon number one, this carbon two, this three and this four. We will start counting closest to the high priority functional group. That means that our methyl group is on carbon number two and our ol, our alcohol group is on carbon number one, two methyl butan one ol. Last compound, we have got, hopefully you can spot, we've got this carbon-carbon double bond, making this an alkene. We have got a four-carbon chain, two probes and two butes, okay? Wonderful, delightful. So this is going to be butene for our, I was going to underline it, but that would look like a triple bond, for our carbon-carbon double bond but we still have to number it. Now remember, we can start counting from either direction. We can make this carbon number one on the left, or we can make this carbon number one on the right. We want, of course, the, sm we want, of course, the smallest possible number, which would be one. So this is but one in. Now let's look at some trickier functional groups, ones that you might see at the end of year 12 when you're looking at the oxidation of alcohols topic, but will become a lot more um, frequently seen once you are in year 13. So, and I'm sticking with skeletal. Let's start with our first one. Now looking at this functional group, we've got a C double bond O, which is a carbonyl. Now, depending on the position of that carbonyl, that can be a couple of different functional groups. Because this one is at the end of the carbon chain, this is an aldehyde and so gets the suffix al, aldehyde. Now for the longest carbon chain, notice I usually do that first. The reason that I've saved that for second is because I want you to pay particular attention to the numbering. Remember I said before, if you're paying attention, that whatever gets the end of the name, so that's our al here, that's going to get our smallest possible number, which means we are going to start counting our carbons from closest to our functional group. So that would make this carbon number one, and then two, three, four, and five. Putting that together, we've got pen, oh, I don't like that. Putting that together, we have got pentanal. Now, pentan one al, I mean, it's not wrong, but because an aldehyde can only go on carbon number one, you don't have to number it because there's no other place it could possibly be. This is already unambiguous, which is one of my favorite words in chemistry. Now, let's not forget our methyl group here, our one carbon branch. This is as pre-numbered on carbon number four. So this is four methyl pent anal. That was weird, that's fine. Let's go to our next compound. We've got a carbonyl again, another C double bond O, but notice its different position. Instead of this being at the end of the carbon chain, it's somewhere within the carbon chain. So instead of this being an aldehyde, this is of course a ketone. So we'll get the ending own. Now for practice on being able to spot functional groups, I will have a whole other video on that. For now, let's focus on just the naming principles. So we've got our own. Again, we want to start counting, making sure that this carbon has got the smallest possible number. So which end of the chain are we going to start counting at? Well, we're going to start counting at this carbon, so on the right-hand side, so that our ketone group has got the smaller number. So that would be carbon one, two, and then we've got a choice, but these are both the same number of carbon, so three, four, and five. If we said three, four, and five, we would actually get exactly the same thing. So we have got now pentan two own, but let's of course not forget our lovely branch. This is a two carbon branch, right? One carbon here, another carbon here, which means this is an eth, or now that it's a branch, ethyl, and making sure to position that, we've already numbered this based on our high priority group, which means that our ethyl group is on carbon number three. And the last one, 
See if you can get this one before me if you want to pause the video, have a go and then press play. We have got another functional group that you're going to see mostly in the F13, but also in the oxidation of alcohols. And that is your carboxylic acid group, our C, I'm just going to put the C here, our COOH. So this gets the ending, oic acid. Now, just like before, because this is the end of the name, we want to start counting from this carbon to give our highest priority group the smallest possible number. I know I'm repeating myself, but it's going to stick in your head, isn't it? It is. It is. So if this is carbon number one, then two, three and four, making this four carbons butanoic acid. Now we have something else going on here. We have got this OH group. Now we would be used to, and we saw in a previous example, that this is our alcohol, so it would usually give us the ending all. But the end of the name is already taken, right? The end of the name is oic acid. So it's not going to be butanoic acid all or butanol oic acid. Instead, because our carboxylic acid has the high priority and is taking the end of the name, the OH group is kind of relegated to being now a prefix. And when it's a prefix, instead of being ol, it becomes hydroxy. So now completing this name with our hydroxy group, of course, on carbon number three, based on our numbering from earlier, this is three hydroxy butanoic acid. And those are my examples for today. I've got so many more examples um, online. So do have a look at some of my TikToks for those. For more A-level chemistry practice and support and explanations, make sure that you have subscribed. Make sure that you like this video. Leave a comment if you've got any questions or just to say um, hi. And I'll see you in the next one.